The time has come. Finally. Chevy, it's your job to take the tree down. Okay, just stretch it out. I got this. The tree's this way. What? He was just gonna go for a nap. <laughs> Putting away all the Christmas decorations. Flip that sign around to home sweet home again. Oh, she's already got this one. We leave everything up for uh, Ukrainian Christmas. We're not Ukrainian, but it's an excuse to leave our Christmas decorations up for an extra half a month. Part of the Disney collection. These things aren't cheap. <laughs> you gotta be very careful with them. When did we get this one? Uh, just before Christmas last year, it arrived in the mail. Oh, okay, so we ordered that. It wasn't. It was from Jim. Well, oh, that's right. Jim got me a gift card, and I ordered that because I've wanted one since I was a little girl. <sighs> Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Same Jim that got me my steering wheel and Oops. shift cover and the the cover for the. The, the actual gear shaft or the shifter shaft is waiting for me at the post office. I'm picking that up. Oh, I was going to pick it up today, but I won't get there in time. Because I'm leaving a little late today. Maybe on the way back. It's waiting there for me, though. So got to be very careful with these. Very expensive little things. I got Britt this one for Christmas this year. We already put it away, but uh, we showed it to you. Um, that one. It's not focusing, but it's that one. <laughs> it was on the... Not cheap. Not too sure where this goes. I'm thinking on Pluto to protect them, so we're just gonna smother Pluto until next Christmas. That would make sense, Yancy's way up there, right? Pluto really reminds me of people. Just gonna smother him. See you next year, buddy. Go to sleep. Having fun yet? So much fun. Worth it. I don't know you were helping. Oh, you're gonna okay. I was gonna grab that. Actually Look at this muscle woman. It can still break. We didn't have these lights on all Christmas because uh, we didn't want it flashing all the time. But there's no way on this piece to have the lights just on, not flashing. That's too bad. Which is really annoying. I would have preferred just clear, still lights. Way classier. Yeah. And as you heard, it sings through all the songs. I don't want to get copyright struck. But has a bunch of Christmas songs that it plays. Oh, can't complain. I mean, it's a beautiful piece. It's still gorgeous. Again, it's uh, Disney, so it comes with a Disney price tag.
Look at this salt on the ground in my shop, eh? It's from all the melt off the truck when it's in here. I have to clean it out. So Old Blue is running just outside the door here. Got her fully serviced. Got a couple of other minor little things fixed up on it too. She's ready for the road again. I just gotta get a couple of my things out of here, like my cooler, some paper towel, some parts and stuff out of my fridge over there. And we'll be taking off. Cleaned up the Christmas decorations today. We had a, a late Christmas family gathering on my mom's side. It was nice to see everybody again, my aunts and uncles and a few of my cousins. But we gotta go to work. Gotta work as hard as we can. Today, Britt is 29 weeks, which means there's only 11 weeks left to the due date. And I'm taking off two weeks before that. That means I only have nine weeks left to earn as much money as I can before I'm off for four to six weeks. You guys ready for baby vlogs? <laughs> there's gonna be four to six weeks of uh, me being at home. So maybe we'll come to the shop every now and then. We'll uh, check up on Old Blue. But that's coming, nine weeks, okay? I know a lot of you like the trucking stuff, so here's a heads up for you right now. There's some non-trucking stuff coming in nine weeks. I hope you guys stick around and follow our journey. It's a very exciting time for me, for my wife, for our whole family. Uh, I'd love to share it with you. Grand Point, North Dakota. Settled in here for the night. The Sim uh, Simonson truck stop. You know, I'm still surprised how many guys idle their trucks through the night. I know I'm uh, I'm running the risk here of sounding super judgy because I mean, you know, you do what you want, right? You, I mean, in some states you're not allowed to, but here it doesn't matter. It's a really nice night out. It's like zero degrees Celsius, 32 Fahrenheit. Now, if you have a bunk heater, I have a Wabasso heater running right now. It, it doesn't run all night at this temperature. Just brings the the cab up to a, the temperature I want it to and then it sort of you know peters down until it gets a little cool again and then it just keeps the cab at a nice temperature and I have an engine heater as well too which will warm up my the water temperature in the engine uh, so that it's easier to turn over in cold weather but and I, I use it but I don't need it in weather like this it's a, it's a nice night zero degrees 32 Fahrenheit you don't need to idle your truck in this weather if you have a bunk heater okay so so I'll cut some guys some slack. Not everyone has a bunk heater. I don't know why. Uh, you, a lot of guys also have APUs. And I've been asked a lot if I would put an APU on Old Blue. Well, of course I, I would. I don't have any room on my frame now for it. Like you've seen the side of my truck. The frame is all taken up. There's no place for me to put it. Now, once I stretch the frame another 24 inches, I'll probably have some space to put one. And maybe I'll consider it when I do my restoration on this truck. Uh, in 2026, I'm planning on doing all of the, the full restoration, like everything, pulling everything off, putting, like replacing all the old parts, pretty much making this into a brand new truck again. We'll see how the engine's doing at that point. I'll consider doing a rebuild then. It may not need it yet, but it might. It'll be close to it at that time. But, uh, you know, get the frame painted, get the, uh, I'll check the condition of the diffs. I might need to replace the diffs. I'll be I'll be spending, spending a lot of money into a full restoration of Old Blue. Uh, at some point, if not in 2026, then at some point, because I want to keep this truck running, right? And at that point, maybe I'll put an APU on the truck. What an APU is, it's an, it's an auxiliary power unit. Auxiliary power unit. Uh, you can actually set them up. It's like a separate motor, like a tiny little, almost like a lawnmower engine, a little quieter, but uh, r runs on the side of your truck, and that keeps your fluids warm in your engine. The same thing that my engine heater does now. It also keeps your batteries charged. That's something that my system doesn't do. It'll keep your batteries charged so your batteries aren't dead in the morning. It'll keep your cab warm. And also in the summertime, it'll keep your cab cool. It runs the air conditioning in the summer. That's something my truck doesn't do. I, my my Wabasto heaters, they, they don't uh, keep the truck cool. I have to open the windows. And I got those screens, like you can probably see them. Huh? They're behind my stuff right now. Uh, I got those screens that I can put in my window so I can my windows down get a fresh breeze through here But an APU is a lot better saves the engine of the truck and you can still stay comfortable in here A lot of guys have that they're about twelve thousand dollars Canadian or you know, like ten grand American to install not cheap But over the course of a truck's lifetime. Oh, it'll pay for itself over and over again, right? 
But anyways, back to the point of idling trucks at night. And some guys, uh, maybe they're newer drivers out here. So this is some tip for you new guys of how to idle your trucks. If you need to idle your truck to either stay warm or cool, you wanna make sure you're not idling at like 500 RPM at the base of your idle. You don't wanna just start the truck and just let it idle like that. The reason is you gotta look at your oil pressure. When you idle your truck at like 500 RPM, you're probably running at about what, 20 PSI oil pressure? That's not enough oil pressure to get your engine properly lubricated, get the oil from the bottom of your engine up to the top to, to lube up the top. You're gonna wear out your engine very fast idling so low. For me, if I do have to idle through the night or for an extended period of time or any time really, I always bump my idle up to 1000 RPM or close to it, maybe even 800 RPM. You wanna look at your oil pressure though and make sure you keep your oil pressure at a good rate so that you know that the oil's getting lubricated through your engine properly. Because if you if you sit there, I, I walk through truck stops all the time with drivers idling. And I'm not gonna rag on you for idling, I do it too. Sometimes there's no choice. We live in a, the northern climate up here, totally get it, that's not my issue. My issue is so many trucks that I, I walk past at night are idling like really low, really low. I know Volvo trucks, they don't even let you idle your truck up past like, what, 800? Maybe 800? which is bonkers to me because I want, every engine's different, every truck is different, but you wanna up your idle, especially if you're idling for a long period of time, get that idle up there. You know, as high as Volvo will allow you on mine, I bring it up to between 900 and 1,000, maybe about 1,000, maybe even higher if it's really cold. First of all, that'll keep your engine warmer so you, you stay warmer in the cold weather, but it'll also make your engine last longer. It's never good to idle your truck for long periods of time in any situation, whether you're at the higher idle or the lower idle. But if you have to, you want that idle up high. But what I see, another thing that confuses me <laughs> is uh, I'll see drivers on a perfect night, let's say like 15 degrees Celsius or like a, a nice, what is that in Fahrenheit? Like a 60, 65 Fahrenheit, like a nice, comfortable, comfortable night, right? Not too cool, not too hot and they have their trucks idling through the night. Sometimes there's a good reason for that. Maybe they have like a sleep apnea machine that needs to be running off the batteries. So you can't judge everybody just just because of that. Sometimes they have to have their truck running for, for reasons like that. But I know not all of them have, have that reason. Some of them just idle the truck regardless. And you know, they might be company drivers. Maybe they just don't care about the wasted fuel. They don't care about wearing out the engine. There's probably explanations like that a lot, but for me anyways, you don't have to do it like I do it. There's a million of us out here, millions of truckers out here, and we all have our own ways of doing things. So I can only show you the way I do it. I'm not saying that's the best way to do it. I, I feel like it is, but I'm, I'm learning every day. I learn new things every day. I don't claim to know everything about trucking. I don't want to be that trucker guru. I don't want you to see me as a trucker guru. Anything I say to you, like maybe double check it yourself. Like just, just check it out. I'm, I've been doing this a long time, so I may come across as confident in in some things. I've been driving trucks since 2006. I've been over the road somewhat since 2011, with very short breaks in between, just a few months here and there. Like, I've owned several trucks. I've leased a few trucks. Now I have this truck. I've driven company trucks, city trucks, highway trucks. So I feel like I know, but I'm always learning. You learn new things every day. So uh, that disclaimer out there, I always shut Old Blue off for the night, if at all possible. The coldest I've shut her off for was at minus 23 Celsius, <clears throat> which is pretty cold. Where's my phone right now? Oh, someone wants to come say hi to me. I was just talking about how I shut off Old Blue for the night. Yeah. And uh, he walked up, what's your name? Wiley. Wiley. Yeah. He's been watching since I was in the other W9, which is now owned by Brian. That's been many, many years. That's been many years. Just started subscribing, so I just made my first YouTube account. But yeah, I've been watching oh. since then. So yeah. Well, that's awesome. That's a nice little treat, little surprise. Yeah. <laughs> he caught me vlogging to you guys. <laughs> and there he goes. What a nice guy. 
Doesn't live too far away from here. He'd be a good friend to have. I hope I meet up with him again sometime soon. That was a lot of fun talking with him. He talked to me here for like an hour, so it's always nice to meet good like-minded people on the road. One great thing about this job is exactly that. The people you get to meet that you would have never met otherwise. Pretty cool. So I'm gonna go to bed now. Thanks for watching everybody. Don't forget, if you did like the video, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't like it, you can hit the dislike button twice. And I'll see you tomorrow.